Hello and welcome to this video on converting fractions to recurring decimals. Now just to remind you of how we actually do normal division, if we say had 6193 and we were trying to divide it by 11, then we can use something called short division, sometimes known as a bus stop method because this looks a bit like a bus stop, or does it, I'm not really sure. Um, so we put the number on the left on the right and the thing we're dividing by on the left. So we say how many times does 11 go into 6? We can't do it, but how many times does 11 go into 61? It goes in five times. That gets us up to 55, and we have a remainder of six. How many times does 11 go into 69? Well, it goes in six times, remainder three. And then how many times does 11 go into 33? It goes in three times. Now, if there was a remainder, we just put remainder something. But let's just say we were doing eight divided by five. We have a way of doing that even though five doesn't go exactly into eight. So if we do the usual thing, eight is being divided by five. We say, how many times does five go into eight? Well, it goes in once, remainder three. But where do we put the remainder three? Now, the trick is we can add extra digits. If we put 0 0.0, well, 8.0 is the same as eight, isn't it? I've got to therefore put this decimal point at the same place here. And we said there was a remainder three. Five went into eight one time, and there was a remainder three. And now we have somewhere to put that remainder. So we can then say, how many times does five go into 30? Well, it goes in six times. So eight divided by five is 1.6. But we can use this principle to get infinitely many digits after the decimal place. So let's just say we had a third. That means one divided by three. Just remember that a fraction is ultimately just a division. So we're going to do the usual thing. I'm going to do one and we're dividing by three, so three goes on the left. And don't put it the wrong way around. Just because three is bigger than one, it's still the three we're dividing by, so it goes on the left. So we say, how many times does three go into one? Well, no times, but remainder of one. If we have one suite and we share it between three people, each person gets zero sweets, but we still have the one suite left in our hand. So with that remainder of one, we need to put point zero, and that allows me to put that remainder of one here. Now if I put a decimal point here, I have to put a decimal point here. How many times does three go into 10? Well, three whole times, remainder one. And again, I can just put another zero. 1.00 is the same as one, isn't it? So now I have somewhere to put my remainder of one. So I put it on here, three is into 10, three. I could put another zero with the remainder of one. How many times does three go into 10? Three times. And we can see, basically, we're just gonna get three every time. And we could write that in a concise way by writing it as zero, point three recurring. And what that dot means is that we're repeating this digit of three, which we can see we are, 0 0.33333. It's repeating, it's recurring. Let's do it again with this next one. So we've got two ninths, which just means two divided by nine. Let's use the usual method. So we're doing two divided by nine. How many times does nine go into two? Zero times remainder two. So put point zero and put the remainder of two here. How many times does nine go into 20? Well, it goes in twice, remainder two. How many times does nine go into 20? Twice, remainder two, etc. And you can see, basically the two's going to repeat and that's gonna be 0 0.2 recurring. What about the next one, question three? So we've got four elevenths, which is four divided by 11. So we do four divided by 11. How many times does 11 go into four? Zero times, remainder four. So put point zero, put the remainder four there, and we need the decimal point there. How many times does 11 go into 40? Well, it goes in three whole times, remainder seven. So we put the seven here with an extra zero. How many times does 11 go into 70? Six times, remainder four. How many times does 11 go into 40? Three times, remainder seven. And basically, once you see the same remainder again, we know it's going to start to repeat. So we know this would then be 6 again, and it would go 3, 6, 3, 6, 3, 6, because these remainders are going 4, 7, 4, 7, 4, 7. So we can write that as 0 0.36 with the recurring dots on the 3 and the 6. And that means we repeat everything between those two dots. So it goes 3, 6, and then it goes back to the first dot, 3, 6, back to the first dot, 3, 6, etc. What about the fourth one? We've got three sevenths. So that's three divided by seven. So this one goes on for much longer. So we're doing three divided by seven. How many times does seven go into three? Zero times remainder three. 
put the remainder three there. How many times does seven go into 30? Four times remainder two. How many times does seven go into 20? Twice remainder six. How many times does seven go into 60? It goes in eight times remainder four. How many times does seven go into 40? It goes in five times remainder five. This is going on, isn't it? Seven into 50, that goes in seven times remainder one. How many times does seven go into 10? Once, remainder three. And now, can you see, we had a remainder three before. So we know the next digit must be four. So it's gonna be four again, and it's gonna start repeating. So we know that three divided by seven must be zero point, well, it goes four, two, eight, five, seven, one, and then repeats again. So four, two, eight, five, seven, one. Don't put the four again, because what we do is we put a dot here, a dot here, and that means we're repeating between the four and the one. So it goes four, two, eight, five, seven, one, and then we go back to the first dot, four, two, eight, five, seven, one. Do not put an extra four at the end, because otherwise it'd be four, two, eight, five, seven, one, four, four, two, eight, and it would be repeating that four next to each other.